will start a lightning development, I mean, Salesforce development, starting from Apex classes. So to write Apex classes, we have different ways. Either you can write from new, I mean, sorry, Apex classes, and then you will pick up the option called new, and then you can write your Apex classes. And there is also another way that you can also write Apex classes is the way that you can go to like my developer console. In the developer console, you can go to the file, click on new, and then you can also write your Apex classes, and then you can also replicate. So Apex six is my example. And whenever you are mentioning your class name, try to follow Pascal case. Pascal case in the sense every word the first letter should be capital now you can see apex is the one word a capital basics b is a capital right so this is how the class will contain this public is nothing but access modifier of a class whether it is a public or a global we can't create a class with a private or protected we can create a class the top level class always a public or a global Public classes are something like which you will be using within this Salesforce, within your own Salesforce. Are. If it is a global, then what it means? The other systems like Oracle or other Salesforce environment can able to access your classes through integrations. Clear? I mean, you can expose your data to them through a integrations. In Apex classes or anything, we have four rules. First thing we'll be having global variables. We'll be having global variables and then local variables, constructors, and fourth one method. A class will contain only these four parameters. A class will only contain only these four different types. First one is global variable, local variable constructors methods let's say global variables if i say global variables what are the global variables we have global variables see global variables again two types global variables again two types static global variable and non-static global variable which are declared or initialized at class level are called global variables which are declared at a uh, initialized at class level are called global variables. See the actual syntax for global variables goes access specifier, access specifier, and if I say curly braces, that's an optional thing that you can use or not use. Static keyword, static keyword, data type. data type variable name this is called declaration declaration of global variable default value for this is default value for declaration variable is always equal to null default value if you declare any global variable just like this then the default value of this particular variable is null value clear the other way of mentioning is that it's the same way but the only difference is that we'll initialize it what we do we initialize access specifier instead of here we'll say from data type value this is called initialization initialization of global variable default value there is no default value because you are assigning a value here right 
So this value will be the output. So let's say access specifiers. What are access specifiers? Access specifiers are or public, global, private. Public, global, private. These are the access specifiers that we'll be using here. See, for now, this you have to buy hard. No matter what, the basics, the basics of any programming, you should buy hard the basic syntaxes. At a class level, at a class level, we have four, four different items. Global variables, local variables, constructors, and methods. Now we are seeing global variables. Again, global variables is classified two types: static global variable and non-static global variable. The syntax of initializing or declaration of a global variable access specifier you can use public or private. Ensure if the class is public, you should not use global. The top level one should be the highest, or local variable should be the same as class variable specifier. That's a rule. Declaration of global variable. So this is called declaration. If you are not mentioning equal to, that means that you are just declaring. If you say that equal to, then it means that initialization. Initialization means you assign some value to that variable. So it got initialized and it got a memory in the switch stack. <coughs> if you see the actual implementation, I can say public static string, public static string, user name this is called my declaration right and we can define public static string username i'll say underscore t here i'll say underscore i i means initialization i'll say Now you can see this is called declaration. The value of this value is null, and here it is declaration. And what else we thought about public string? As I said, within the square brackets, this is an option whether you wanted to go or not go. The first two variables are static variables. The reason behind we are using a keyword called static. The next one I am using straight away username underscore non static non static underscore declaration and i'll say public string username underscore non static underscore i equal to now you can see how many variables we have created till now the first two are static variables. The reason behind we are using a value called static keyword, isn't it? Then this is called static variables. If you are not using a static keyword within any variable declaration, then it is called non-static variable. And the first one you can see username D, which is a static variable, but there is no value assigned by default. And if you can see line number 18, the value is assigned nothing but initialized. The same thing goes here. Now we'll see what is, how to access this data, how to access this data to read what data we are getting. So to execute any of your Apex classes for a testing purpose, all you need to go to the debug, open execute anonymous window, or you can put control E, or you can put control E if it is a Windows machine, or command E whether it is, if you are using a Mac, command E or control E. So what is the class name? Class name class name and then now we need to understand let me explain one more thing before going all global variable and non-static variables right static variable can be access access or invoked through the class name through the class name if you are using a static global variable you can refer directly a class name if it is a non-static you can be access 
through the object or instance of a class. What is object or instance of a class? So how to create an object for a class? I'm just going to debug, execute anonymous window. So first variable, if I want to access my first variable, I can say string. What is the data type that it is giving? String, username, un underscore d equal to apex class, class name dot variable name. This is what it means, class name dot this one. So what's the outcome we will get? System.debug. If you want to see any output, you, you can use system.debug. Static global declared value. Declared. What could be the outcome? The default value of any declared variable is null, right? So I'll just select. Now if I select this one and ensure that you select open log and then execute. So and then as soon as you get the details and click debug only. What is the outcome that you got? By default the value is null. Null for any declared value, by default the value is null value. Clear? If it is a different, I mean let's say if I want to call my username I string u n underscore i equal to again class name because it is a static variable, right? Class name dot username i system dot debug static global variable initialize now what happens you will get your procodingskills.com as output. If I want to execute only these two lines, not everything, I can select highlight this one and select execute highlighted and then execute highlighted. So what happens? Just execute the bits and pieces. If I say execute, then what happens? It executes all statements. Here I selected only execute highlighted. You can see procodingskills.com. Here I selected both. So you'll get two outputs. Static declared is null and proponent skills. So static variable accessing is very easy. Now the problem comes with the non-static variables. So to invoke your non-static variables, to invoke your non-static variables, you have to create an object for a class. You have to create an object. How to create an object? Class name object name equal to new constructor new constructor so when i say new constructor we'll see for now there is a, the way you can create here is what is the constructor now we need to understand what is constructor right we need to understand what is constructor let's say what is constructor constructor rules no return type no return type name should be class name and no static keyword constructor should not contain a return type and class name should be the same as constructor name and no static keyword. So the ultimately the syntax is access specifier fire and then apex class name open bracket and this is how the syntax goes. This is how syntax goes. Let's say this is called no argumented argumented constructor no argumented constructor public what is our class name apex basics open bracket close the bracket this is called constructor 
whenever you create this is called the scope of the constructor till where the scope of constructor will go it will go to the close bracket of the from open bracket to close bracket is called scope of the default con no argumented constructor so here i'll say system dot debug constructor object created through the no argumented constructor. object created through no argumented constructor how to create an object now you know how to create now what is the class name and then object you can't use object is a keyword obj equal to new this is called constructor right now i am using my constructor isn't it now i can say obj dot okay, string u s n underscore t equal to obj dot Username underscore non static underscore d. Username underscore non static underscore d. I'll say underscore i. i. System dot debug non static. Global variable declared UNT. Now you can see if I execute what happens, I'll get my outcome. So I created an object of a class and then I'm executing and then I am executing. Now you can see null and debug. This is what the outcome it should come. Declared value should be null. And you can see object created through no argumented constructor. Why it is calling? Because I'm calling my constructor, so it will under it will it will execute all the line of code within the constructor, then only it will call the next line. See any Apex programming or any programming, it should go to the next line only the first line code completes. Only the first line entire process completes, then only it will go to the next line. Clear? Any doubt? So we have another type of constructor. We have another ways of constructor creation called argumented constructor argumented constructor argumented in this what happened the same logic but public apex basics you can't have a two constructors with the same name if i save i'll get an error you can see in problems you'll get an error saying that method already defined void apex for the type so it is already defined so what how can we make in unique by passing an argument string value so what i'll do now if i save it will say because this is no argumented this is argumented can i have another method something like this public apex basics string names can i say this I, still we get an error this is not unique because it will not check whether it is a value or name it will check only it will check only the data types it will check only these can be anything these variable names can be anything argument name but it will go with the arguments what type of data argument so these looks very similar so it will not accept if it is like integer integer age then it accepts now you can see because this data type is different and this data type is different here neither is all three are unique it looks unique right so it will accept so what i will do here i will say this dot equal to values 
and this keyword you can use this keyword you can use only for non static members this keyword you can only use for non static you can't use this keyword for usernamed if i say this dot username d equal to values you'll get an error saying that you can't use this keyword for a static members static field cannot be a reference from a non static constructor so you can see this is for a non static and here it is a static so you can't use this keyword for a non static you can only use this keyword only for a non static members clear so what I'll do, I'll just copy the same line of code. I just copy the same line of code. I'll go to the next. Instead of creating object, I'll say nickel. So now tell me what could be the output on user SND. Because what happened? As soon as I'm passing my argument, I'm assigning this value to the declared variable using this dot and then I'm passing my parameter. What happened? The final outcome you will get is nickel here. You can see, right? Nickel. Why nickel? Because I'm passing nickel here. As soon as this particular block executes, the username of non static D is updating with the values. Whatever value I'm passing here, nickel. Nickel is assigning to here. And I'm trying to read the nickel variable, I mean the declared variable after the object creation. Then what happens? I'm getting my nickel. Clear? Okay. Any question on this?